Lockdown is tonight, and I wouldn't do this this late, but honestly, I had to have no time to do it. And really, it doesn't really matter to me about this pay review because this pay review is slowly going to shit. As it does go to San Antonio, but in a way, I feel bad for him. You'll see why in a little bit. First off, we have the uh, Lethal Lockdown. I'm going to go for these as fast as I can from the top of the card to the bottom of the card. Just because I don't care about this card personally. Well, I mean, some matches I do, but not all the time. But this one, uh, Lethal Lockdown. First match is Team TNA versus Team Aces and Eights. Now, Aces and Eights has the one-man advantage, which we'll go through a little bit later. But... Right now we have Samoa Joe, Magnus Sting, the surprise of Eric Young, and after the knockout tag champions, which I'm surprised they fill those belts, and uh, James Storm against Aces and Eights, represented by I believe I have Devon down here, Anderson, uh, the former Mike Knox, uh, Jobber Bischoff, and uh, Luke Gallows. And be a little surprised, uh, this is actually Mike Knox's first ever match in TNA. Uh, for those who don't remember, Mike Knox, the Kelly Kelly boyfriend of in ECW. Not a lot. I mean, he had a few Mysterio. That's pretty much it, is what he had. Not, he didn't really have that good of a run. So, it was even Ace and Ace is kind of a little bit of a surprise, but not really. Now, Ace and Ace does have the one-man advantage, and depending how they use this will determine how... Uh, determine how this match will go. Personally, I don't care about this match. This is one Leave Lockdown I really don't care about. For those who don't know, Leave Lockdown is the TNA watered down war games with uh, weapons on top of the uh, top of the cage. I don't remember if they do that or not. I think they still do. But if there's a bat on there, expect Team Sting to win. If there's something else, it's pretty much a, a coin toss. I don't really care. Much like I don't care about this world title match. I mean, the build is good. It's for an Attitude Era tag teams going at it, or one half of them, I should say. But it's uh, Meth Hardy versus Brother Ray. Or Bully Ray, whatever he is. This match, honestly, might save the pay review. Because Bully Ray might win the world title. Even though he is the uh, son in law of Hulk Hogan. And much like Triple H before him, he might win a few world titles. Even if this is a kayfabe marriage at this point. Because if they were really married, I, I just fuck all at this point. I don't understand why they would even be married in the first place. But somehow he gets uh, brothers and sisters and shit's endorsement. And is the world champion, or soon to be world champion... This match overall, I mean, it has a good build. It's for where I do there, people going at it. This is a match that people might have wanted to see back then, but now it's like, why are we seeing this? Uh, overall, again, not a good match. Uh, that got the title. The new champion, Velvet Sky versus Gail Kim. But before I go over this, I want to talk a little bit about the gut check. Um, why, brother love? Fuck you. Honestly, you had two... Knockouts, you could assign them both, and both of them, honestly, are better than the majority of the knockouts division right now, wrestling-wise, especially Eva Lee's, uh, the former Tough Enough girl, and uh, Blade Tabo, who I did not know much about, actually, what person I am actually clusterfucked on, is the uh, niece of the Barbarian, I thought she was the daughter at one point, She's she reminds me of a mix of Layla Ali and Haku for some reason, just because just of the hair, I guess, but, uh, um, you know, honestly, I would have said sign them both. But at least Brother Love somehow saved himself with uh, the mention of Paul Bear. I mean, it, that got a good, that got a good pop like anything uh, during the troop session of the, uh, of the, uh, gut check. But honestly, I would, I would sign them both. I mean, you need knockouts. Yeah, probably could have made him a fucking tag team, and they would have been done good in the uh, Nagas Tag Division, if you still have it. I don't think you do, but you never know. Uh, but overall, just a few days ago, I would have just fucking ripped apart Brother Love. 
But now I can understand why he did it. Because eventually Ivalice will come back. Plus, she she has a Shine match if she didn't already have it. Which is also, I think, tonight. Uh, Shine 6 or whatever it is. We're probably one of the best female pay-per-views since WSU, to be honest. But, uh, even though it is a, it is a, a Shimmer parent company, but, uh, it, it's still good. But, the Lockers title overall, I mean, Gail Kim is undefeated in these. And by the way, all these are still cage matches, so this is one thing WWE never does with their women. Never. Not even a chair match, not even a hell in a cell. Let alone a cage match. This is one thing TNA does best with their women. Put them in the cage and just fight. That's what I like about TNA. It's the one thing I will not shit about on TNA. The Nakas Division has been lacking as of late. But overall, on, on pay-per-views like Lockdown, they do good on things like this. Again, a match I really don't care about. But if I were to pick, I would say Gail Kim just because she's undefeated. But I guess that streak might end tonight. A drill for a tag match is the main reason I don't care about this card. Um, Air Rue is like what I like to call him. Bobby Roode and uh, Austin Aries versus LAX 2.0 versus Bad Influence. Now this match probably will happen. But TNA stupidly, accidentally, forgot... <laughs> to check Rude's contract and he it expired so we might have the Jeff Jarrett Ultimate Warrior thing from back in the day before he jumps ship honestly this will be the best thing WWE ever does that they sign Bobby Rude although I doubt they will do it just yet because TNA will somehow want to get him to re-sign uh, this, this match won't even happen so I'm going to say fuck it Ed Rude's probably going to retain it anyway but with but the contract, uh, the contract expiring, we might see uh, new tag team champions because TNA is stupid. And finally, two more fuck all matches I don't care about. Uh, West Briscoe versus Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle will honestly kill this kid. I don't care if he's the son of Briscoe. He will kill him in this cage. I mean, he fucking he fucked up Anderson a few years ago. So this is just, this is formality at this point. And. Rob Terry and Robbie E. Rob Terry will kill this fucker and hopefully retire him. Just like what happened to Jesse Sorensen. That's how much I hate Robbie E. So overall, this mat this pay review is is not uh, if you can find a free stream, you wanna watch it, you're a masochist, go for it. But uh overall this match these cards are, are horrible. Just just WCW end of the road worthy. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Maybe I'm a masochist at this point. But uh, close up a fair view tonight. Watch it if you dare. Survive it if you can.